Welcome to Overwatch, and welcome to the first episode of Easy to Learn, Hard to Master. As this is the first episode, allow me to explain the format. Each episode is technically two parts, Easy to Learn, and then the Hard to Master part. With each episode, we'll take a concept or a hero and examine them with an eye to learn more. In the Easy to Learn section, we'll look at things which apply generally, as well as more new player-oriented ideas. In Hard to Master, we'll dive deeper into the high-end play and tips. In this episode, we'll be talking about general concepts in Overwatch and how they can differ from other games. These will be broad tips that will hopefully improve your chances to win when you first load up that sweet, sweet beta. The first concept is respawning in Overwatch. By far the biggest and most frequent mistake I see, and even still fall prey to myself, is running out of the spawn on your own, going to the crumbling front line and getting picked off on your own. Doing it again. And again. And again. Let me explain. Overwatch doesn't have a wave-based respawn system like many FPS games. This is done intentionally so that you have time to assess, pause and think about what might have gone wrong, as well as keep Lucio, Mercy and Symmetra effective as heroes when you want to get back to the fight faster. Especially in your first pack of games, watch out for this habit. Try to keep track of what's happening on your team as you're going back to them, either by looking at the chevrons on the screen, their colour indicates if they're damaged or not, or by pressing tab and seeing what's going on. If most of your team is dead or dying, you might want to hold off. This is especially true for Lucio. Having a Lucio wait near respawn when three people are about to come out of it is incredibly useful for ferrying your team around. By regrouping as a six, you'll be much harder to pick off by backline harassment like Reaper, Tracer and Genji, just don't all blunder around a corner into Zarya ult and get murdered. When you do get murdered, however, use that time wisely. Watch the kill cam and learn. This is super useful if you're killed by Symmetra, by the way, as it can be a cheap and easy way to find her teleporter. Next, check your team composition. Think carefully about what your team lacks and possesses. In general, you want a well-rounded team with variable sources of damage. If you have too many characters relying on precision kills, like Widowmaker, McCree and Genji, you could be just getting run over by a tankier team with more simple damage sources. If you've got no backline harassment, like Tracer and Reaper, you could find yourself constantly going against strong, coordinated pushes. It's all about balance. It was revealed at BlizzCon 2015 that Symmetra has the highest chance to win of any hero. That doesn't mean that everyone should just be playing Symmetra. Nor does it mean that Symmetra is good in all circumstances. She's exceptionally good at holding the front first point, or at pushing when they have a Bastion and a Reinhardt for example with many barriers, but when she's forced onto the back foot and people keep dying, there might be better options. So you've identified there's a weakness in your team comp and are wondering if you should swap. Well, when should you swap? The answer is, it's complicated. If you're the only tank or support on the team, you might just want to stick with what you're doing. If you're going from damage to damage, however, remember that swapping loses you your ultimate. If you've nearly got it, it's probably worth finding a way to dump it. Even if it only nets you a single easy kill, that's worthwhile. But don't be afraid to drop 50% of your ult if your team desperately needs someone who can run at the middle or stand on the payload and you've got no Soldier 76, for example. And this brings me to my next topic, ultimates. You've no doubt seen plenty of videos and streams where people rack up 3, 4 or 5 kills with death blossoms and barrages, but you might not have seen how often going for these huge game ending plays results in nothing more than a dead Farah. While the exact use of ultimates is hero specific, the one word of advice I'll give is use them aggressively. Unless you're actively coordinating with Azaria or other playmakers, using a barrage to rapidly scoop up a single kill and enable you to move smoothly onto the next victim is not a waste. Remember that the game is 6 versus 6. Removing one sixth of their team in a single button press is not a waste, and nor is simply zoning the enemy team off an important location. Hanzo Ultimate especially is a great accessory to pushing into areas the enemy is defending. The other major tip with ultimates I'll give you is the Z key, or Z key if you are so inclined. Press it and your team gets a message saying what percentage your ultimate is on. Once charged, I highly recommend pressing that button. It makes it easy for your team to know when you're ready to fight and you're looking to use that ability. As someone who plays Zarya frequently, it's a godsend when Farahs and Reapers let me know that they're good to go. Next up, let's talk about objectives. Overwatch is a game built around controlling them, and thus it's a game built around controlling space. Whether you're going for a control point or a payload, the only thing that matters at the end of the game is who controls that objective. 
Everything you do should be supporting that goal, whether it's removing defenders, slowing attackers, or forcing them to use ultimates or setting up defenses. It all has to be done in the context of winning the game and taking and holding the objective. Let's begin with point capture. The best advice I can give for point capture is do not overextend. Places like the streets at the start of Hanamura or near the sand crawler on Temple of Anubis should only really be entered by the backline harassment heroes. If your team gets caught and wiped out there, there's no way you'll have enough defense to hold the point. Use the natural chokes on the map to set up your real front line, such as the gate on Hanamura, the arch on Anubis, or the wall in King's Row. These are close enough to the point so that if things go bad, you can retreat slightly and still contest it. You're also less likely to get run past by a back capping tracer, and it's more likely where Torbjorn and Symmetra are going to want to set up their turrets and be lurking nearby. This point is doubly true for when you lose your first point. Your priority has to be to get back to the next point immediately and contest it. The amount of times I've seen both points captured within a minute of each other because people didn't fall back appropriately is too many to count. The enemy respawn moves up, usually near the first point, and their mobile heroes are probably already dashing to race you to the next point. Fall back, stabilize, and then you can begin to consider the value of poking your nose out. Of course, the opposite is true on attack. Catch stragglers and send people like Tracer to immediately put pressure on the point. The second the first point is lost is usually one of the most vulnerable times for the second point. React accordingly. Another unique quirk of Overwatch is that the point is divided into three segments. Filling one of these segments means that it is yours. Try to keep this in mind when assessing the value of your attack. Capturing one third of the point quickly as Tracer before the defending team gets there is absolutely worthwhile, for example. And using displacement abilities to keep people off the point when there's only one third left has massive value. Next up is Payload. The best advice I have for you in general is always fight near the payload when you're attacking. Doing so means you benefit from a constant AoE heal. You're basically getting a free AFK Lucio following your team, meaning that you're much stronger with it than without it. This is especially true against heroes like Tracer, who really struggle to outdamage that constant healing. Ideally, you want three people pushing at all times. These should be the less mobile heroes, who, if they were pushing for their head, could get caught in bad fights and killed off. Things like tanks, Soldier 76, and some of the support should focus on keeping the payload going, enabling your Tracer, Reaper, or Farah type pieces to range ahead and keep the enemies on the back foot. When defending against the payload, do the opposite. Try and find those people away from the payload and engage them. Anytime the enemy team is not pushing the payload, keep them doing that. If all six of them have run ahead to fight you, get into a slow, poke-heavy fight that never really commits. It's all about running down the clock, and the payload is going nowhere. The difference between having five minutes to push the final checkpoint and having two minutes to do it is huge. Buying time is vital. On defense in general, try to have at least one backline harassment hero, especially on the second point for control point maps. Reaper especially can win many one versus ones, so finding enemies leaving the spawn on their own is basically free kills. As coordination is still developing in most players' psyche, it'll usually take time for them to stop wandering out one by one, meaning you, on your own, can buy your team several minutes worth of deaths. Just hope that your entire team doesn't come out to try spawn camping. The moment that fails, or a tracer dashes through, is the moment you lose. Finally, I want to talk about contesting objectives. Objectives are contested when they're being occupied by both teams, and are effectively frozen. If you're about to lose, nothing is more valuable than contesting the objective. Getting an extra sniper's Winnermaker when you're one second from defeat is meaningless, for example. Two heroes in particular stand out in contesting objectives right now, Reaper and Mei. Both can effectively become invulnerable while contesting, Zenyatta can too, although only with his ultimate. Use this to buy essential time for your team to respawn and try and retake the point. Never be that guy who stood near it but lets the game end in defeat because you valued kills over objectives. One frequent question I get asked is how do I learn various heroes? Or a popular variant, how do I learn this one hero specifically? And my advice to both of them is essentially the same. Try out everyone a little bit in your first days to figure out who you're naturally syncing with. After that, pick a hero in each role that you can fall back on. If you're like me and dream of being a Terror on Widowmaker, understand that nothing kills a team faster than having two Widowmakers. If you want a good, all-round hero in each role, I recommend learning Roadhog, Soldier 76, Mei, and Lucio. 
While they have their quirks and do suit certain situations better than others, you can generally find ways to be useful in any team with those four. The tanks especially are tricky, Zarya and D.Va especially, but Roadhog can function in most teams as a pretty nasty detriment where Reinhardt and Winston are a little more situational. If you're looking to learn one hero in particular, remember that flexibility is key in Overwatch. Even as someone who feels they understand the game pretty well, I still fall prey to tunneling onto one hero in a match. That said, for that single hero, practice is the only way forward. Just make sure you understand when you're being more trouble than you're worth. I think in Overwatch, knowing when to swap off a hero is just as important as knowing when to swap onto them. The final miscellaneous tip I'll give you is spend a little time learning the maps. Load up a game on your own and just take a walk around, have a look at the scenery and try and figure out where things like the health packs are. Heroes especially like D.Va, Tracer and Genji will massively benefit from knowing where to run in a pinch, but everyone should really learn where these things are. Not having to rely on your poor overworked Mercy to top you off all the time is something that can't be underestimated. And that's that! In Heart and Master, we'll be looking deeper into what makes a strong team comp, assessing teammates and yourself on the fly, as well as some more focused assessment on who should be doing what from moment to moment, capturing points, pushing payloads, and so on. If there's other things you'd like me to cover, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching to the end, I've been one channel amongst many, and I've been happy to talk you through some basic advice in Overwatch. If you want more similar content, you know what to do, like, sub, and all that fluff. If you're eagerly awaiting beta and want to see some of this stuff in practice, come join me on my stream. I announce whenever I'm starting via Twitter and usually on the channel as well, and hopefully more of you will get to join me in game soon. Toodles!